uh, on time right now, so maybe we can start. Okay, so hi everybody. I am uh, Dr. Cindy Wong. I am a clinical oncologist from the Union Oncology Center. So today we are uh, very uh, honored to have uh, four speakers uh, to share with us on the um, trial status and also on their experience regarding the use of mapitofim for prevention of breast uh, radiation dermatitis uh, for our patients. So um, we do have a Q&A sections uh, after all the presentations. So if there is any questions for the speakers, please uh, try to uh, enter the questions in the check box instead of uh, uh, raising up their hands because uh, we got more than 100 registrations uh, probably. So that would be quite confusing if that is the way. Okay, so without further ado, uh, now we would like to invite uh, Dr. Edward Chow, uh, who is a professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of Toronto. He will share with us on the data of um, randomized control trial on the mapitofim in the prevention of breast cancer radiation dermatitis. So Dr. Chow, please, I will share the screen right now. Okay. So thank you for the invitation. Next. Next. Back one, back one. No, backward. Backward. Yes, uh, next one. Okay. Good. So the talk is on the Mepitel film for the prevention of Acute radiation dermatitis in breast cancer, a randomized multi-center open phase uh, phase three trial in three uh, hospitals in Toronto, Ontario. Next. So as we know, radiation is important to prevent the local regional re recurrence in breast cancer. However, the radiation-induced skin toxicity, also known as radiation dermatitis, are common. Patients who develop moderate to severe radiation dermatitis may experience treatment interruption and long-term risk of the side effect. And the supportive skin regimens are highly variable across institutes. Most commonly use the aqueous creams, washing with soap and water as the prophylaxis. The Mapital film is a silicone-based term with safe tech technology has been investigated in breast cancer. Next. So radiation exposure disrupts the normal cell proliferation. 95% of the patients do develop acute radiation dermatitis. The acute radiation dermatitis developed within the first two weeks of the treatment, and the symptoms include erythema, pruritus, pain, edema, pigmentation, monster screenation. Next. So the risk factor for the moderate to severe radiation dermatitis include the mastectomy, large breast, radiation dose fractionation, the use of the boots and bolus, smoking, and concurrent chemotherapy. It does have negative impact on the quality of life, treatment completion, patient satisfaction, activities of the daily living, self-esteem, and the long-term cosmesis. Next. This is the grading of the radiation dermatitis. Gray zero, normal. Gray one, mild erythema. Gray two, moderate to brisk erythema. The patchy moist desquamation in the skin fold. And gray three, severe moist desquamation in areas other than skin folds. Our purpose of the study is to prevent grade two and grade three toxicity. Next. For patients undergoing mastectomy and large breast radiation treatment, these are the patients at high risk for the radiation dermatitis. In our center, patients going through for post mastectomy radiation treatment, one third of them would develop grade three radiation dermatitis, and of which 20% with extensive moist desquamation. Patients with the large breast, when they are treated in supine, 40% of them would develop moist desquamation, and in the prone position, 27% would develop moist desquamation. Next. So the standard care at our Odet Cancer Center includes the aqueous cream, saline compress, topical steroid, topical antibiotics, energetic, and the dressing. Next. This is the Mapital film uh, with the uh, SurfTech technology. Next. We did a feasibility study to test the mapital film in the prevention of radiation dermatitis, and that was published in Practical Radiation Oncology with good results. Next. We therefore hypothesized that the mapital film might prevent the moderate to severe radiation dermatitis in large breasted and post mastectomy patients. 
The primary endpoint is the incidence of the CTCAE grade three or grade three radiation that time is during and within three months of the completion of radiation. The secondary endpoints include the grade three, the healthcare assessment, the uh, patient assessment, and the combined score, including the actual side effect. Next. Eligibility criteria include a firm diagnosis, a pathological diagnosis of breast cancer, mastectomy patient, patient with large breast 36 or NLC, and patient scheduled for conventional and the hypofractionation radiation treatment. Next. These are the ineligibility criteria, including the BRACD, bilateral radiation treatment, previous radiation treatment, silicone allergy, and the uh, inflammatory breast disease, and uh, poor performance status. Next. We randomized the patients to two to one methotel film to one standard care, and we stratified according to the surgery type, the dose fractionation, the use of the boost, and the bolus. Next. This is the methotel film, and we applied, we applied on the uh, patient breast or the chest wall. Next. The methotel film was applied to the entire breast or the chest wall on the first day of the radiation treatment by our research assistant. The film integrity was assessed every day. In patients received the local regional radiation treatment. Only the breast and chest wall was covered by the methotel film and the supercapicular and the axillary area by the standard care because of poor adherence of methotel film in these areas. On the last day of the radiation, the entire film was replaced for the methotel patient so that it will provide another two weeks of the protection. Next. This is what we asked the patient to score. We asked them about the pruritus, the pain, blistering, erythema, pigmentation, edema, and the trouble fitting uh, the bra. Next. And we also used the wrist rust. There is two components, the patient component. We asked the patients about the tenderness, discomfort of the pain, itchiness, the burning sensation, and the effect of the day-to-day -day activities. On the research side, we asked the erythema, dry desquamation, moist desquamation, and then the process. Next. These are the intervals when we do the assessment, basically at the baseline and at a regular interval during and right after the radiation treatment. Next, we did the sample size calculation and not going to bore you. In summary, we need 192 patients for this two to one ratio study, but because of the COVID, we therefore increased the patients to 392 patients in total. Next, we used the modified intention to treat analysis, meaning that the patient had to at least have one risk class on the CTCAE score before we can randomize. We also did the uh, sensitivity analysis, the total analysis, so that we uh, take into account for those initially randomized to the methotel film, but switch out. We use various multivariable analysis. Next. This is the concept diagram. We removed the patient during the COVID time, January 2020 and May 2022 with 403 patients. Next, in summary, for the 400 presented patients, because of the two to one randomization with 20 patients with flu, we have 251 patients in the red arm and the 125 patients in the standard care. Next, eight patients switched from the methotel film to standard care because of the rash, pruritus, and the others, one with, uh, with flu. So the remaining 367 patients were included in the per protocol analysis. Next. The patient characteristics were well balanced between the two arms, the median age around 58 to 60, the lumpectomy to mastectomy around 60% to 40%. The use of the hypofractionation is predominant over 94% with 6% of the conventional radiation treatment and around 60% of the patient with no boost and no bolus. Next, this is the uh, result for the primary endpoint for the grade two N or grade three toxicity. In the methotel film, there is only 15.4% of the patients with the toxicity versus 45.6% of the patients in the standard care. So it's a highly significant. So again, the ratio of the grade two to grade three toxicity fell from 45% down to 15%. And for the grade three toxicity, similarly, from 13.6% in the standard arm down to 2.79% in the methotel arm. Again, highly statistically significant. Next, for the moist desquamation that we asked the healthcare professional, 
the most transformation happened in 8% in market health care and around 20% in the standard care. Again, highly statistically significant. Next. When asked about the patient's symptoms, the patients recorded less tenderness, burning sensation, and the patient total score less and is highly statistically significant. When we ask the healthcare professional, they score less erythema, moist exclamation, total score, and the combined patient healthcare professional total score favoring map um. For the SSA, next. Again, the patient reported lower blistering, erythema, pigmentation, edema, and similarly in the healthcare professional arm as well, favoring mepitel on. Next. Patients in the mepitel film were prescribed less topical antibiotics. There was no statistical significance in the use of the topical steroid in both arms, and the sensitivity analysis did not change the outcomes. Next. With regard to the cost, in the mastectomy patients, the cost of the mepitel film around $80 for the entire treatment cost and versus $99 in the uh, lumpectomy arm. Our research assistant spent around 50 minutes in each uh, of the application and the uh, frequency of the uh, touch-up and the foot replacement as shown here in both arms. Next. So the strength of this study is, is a multi-center trial. It is the largest randomized trial of dempermatic health film to date. We had two previous randomized studies before. They employ the intra-patient randomization. We deliberately choose patients at high risk of the radiation dermatitis in this study and stratify according to the several known risk factors. We employ the tools incorporating both the patient and the clinician assessment and the risk of the moist estimation in the standard arm mirror similarities in our historical cohort. However, we also have limitations. It's difficult to blind the patients and readers with assessing radiation dermatitis. Majority of our patients, 94%, received the high vaccination. So it's therefore difficult to assume whether the methyl film was beneficial in patients receiving a conventional dose. And this question is being addressed by Dr. Cobin's aligned study that she will touch upon later on. And the cost of the methyl film might hinder the uh, one spread adoption. Next. So in conclusion, methyl film is more effective than the standard care in preventing grade two or grade three dermatitis. 15% versus 55, 15% uh, versus 45% in patients with large breath or mastectomy. Patient reported reduction in tenderness, discomfort, burning sensation, blistering, erythema, and pigmentation, and edema. Healthcare professional also reported similar reduction. So this study confirms methotelphium is beneficial in patients with higher risk of the radiation disease, and therefore we recommend consideration of methotelphium to prevent the moderate to severe radiation dermatitis in patients at high risk. Next. Next slide. So the uh, study was published in the uh, JCO. Next. We thank, the, uh, com we thank the company of providing and also the participants. Next. We also did a systematic review and meta-analysis of the three randomized studies and that was published in Supportive Care and Cancer. Next. And again, you can see that the diamond, and again, the grade two, grade three, two and three radiation dermatitis is favoring, is less in the methotel arm. Next. These are the uh, patient and the healthcare professional reported the uh, uh, scores. And again, in general, it favors the methotel film. Next. So again, with all these, uh, we recommend the use of the methotel film. Next. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Chow, for the sharing. And now we will move on to the uh, second speaker. Dr. Dr. Kimberly Corbin is a uh, as, is associate professor and radiation oncologist in the breast clinic of Mayo Clinic. So she will share with us on uh, the Mayo Clinic experience and the aliens uh, randomized control trial. So I will share the screen first. Let's welcome uh, Dr. Corbin to share with us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to talk about our experience with Mepitel film. Um, are you able to put that into presentation mode? All right, next slide, please. 
and I don't have any disclosures. Next slide. All right, so um, with my time today, I thought I would talk about how we began uh, to use Mepitel film in our practice at Mayo Clinic, talk about the development of the ongoing Alliance uh, trial, um, how we use Mepitel and uh, where we may use it in the future. Next slide. Um, next slide, I think it just uh, highlights if you just click, click forward, there we go. So, oh, <laughs> and just back to the timeline real quick. Um, so we, um, in our practice in 2014, when the first trial uh, reporting a positive result from Epitel film uh, was published in 2014, there was a pretty dramatic reduction in uh, dermatitis. And at that time, we began to be interested in uh, studying Epitel film in our practice and adopting it into clinical use. Next slide. Um, so this is just adapted from uh, that first New Zealand um, publication uh, with uh, 80 patients uh, who were randomized uh, with their self as controls to medial or lateral half coverage with Mepitel film showing a dramatic reduction in the development of radiation induced skin reaction. And this caught our attention. Next slide. Um, and so uh, Mepitel film is not easy to acquire in the United States, but we were able to um, get some Mepitel film and we did a short pilot study in our own practice, uh, looking at the potential value of Mepitel film and reduction of dermatitis. So this was uh, some photographs from that study. You can see the medial portion of the mastectomy uh, is uh, covered here of the mastectomy of the chest wall. Um, and we were really impressed by the visible reduction in radiation dermatitis. In fact, all six patients had visible reduction. And in the covered area, we saw a maximum of grade one dermatitis. Um, we collected photographs, but we really felt like this is something we wanted to bring into our practice. Next slide. Next slide. Um, so in this time frame, um, we actually began to adopt Mepitel film into practice, so 2016 or so. So we've been using it for um, about eight years um, pretty consistently. Um, at the beginning, it was hard to acquire. Um, and we also um, began to think about what studies we could develop. We developed a, um, a study um, trying to understand the mechanism, including acquiring skin swabs. And then we also felt like this was something that should be um, potentially more widely used in the United States. So we began working on the Alliance trial, which is currently enrolling. Um, next slide. Um, these are uh, some data that I've presented uh, with regard to the use of Mepitel film and protons. Next slide. Um, so this was um, presented in PTCOG uh, several years ago. This was our first experience in using in pr particle therapy. Many of you may know that there have been some concerns that patients who are treated with particle therapy may have a brisker skin reaction uh, than patients who are treated with photon-based practices. Um, and so we thought that this population could potentially benefit. Next slide. Um, so we, uh, we do treat with IMPT, which does allow for skin dose optimization. Um, and these patients all had complete coverage of their chest wall with Mepitel film. Next slide. And this is just uh, in the cohort that was treated, they were largely conventionally fractionated. Some had boosts. And there were a couple that were re-irradiated and had higher risk um, prescript or higher risk uh, disease, so higher uh, intensity treatment. Next slide. Uh, most women were able to use the film successfully. Um, we had patient reported toxicity on all patients as well as uh, patient reported outcomes. We did have a few patients who discontinued the film, um, but all in all a successful uh, go. Next slide. Okay, so we can see that the um, toxicity was largely grade one and two with just one reported grade three toxicity. Next slide. And these are the patient reported outcomes. If you click forward, I think it'll highlight some different things. So click forward, please. Okay, so we can see overall very good quality of life. Um, go ahead. And as some patients uh, at the end of radiation reporting very little flaking or peeling. So most of them are not reporting any issues with that. Um, next slide, about half of patients reporting some itching, um, but overall uh, very low severity of radiation skin burns and uh, peeling. Next slide. And again, these are some photographs, which just kind of, I think, highlight um, the potential value of the Mepitel film and minimizing the uh, radiation dermatitis. So that is a patient um, pre and post, and then 10 days after. Next slide. This is this is the patient who experienced a grade three uh, skin toxicity. This is a patient who had an unusual circumstance with a recurrent cancer after her mastectomy that um, was not amenable to further resection. So she actually got an elevated dose of a 60 gray with a boost of 63 gray with concurrent radiosensitization. So this is a patient who would have 
um, been expected to have an extremely intense uh, skin reaction. I felt like uh, actually did very well with the use of the film. Um, next slide. And this is another example of a patient who had a very high risk cancer. She actually had an integrated boost over the chest wall area. And uh, what I think is uh, kind of important about this picture is you can see that the film was used to protect her skin. There was an area uh, where it ended up not um, adhering that we decided not to use it. Um, and at the end of the treatment, you can see that upper inner area of her chest had a, a much more brisk skin reaction than the areas where we actually were able to keep the film on during the course of treatment, I think highlighting the potential uh, for the film. And again, that's post-treatment. Go ahead. Um, so we felt like this at our initial experience in the photon and proton practice showed low rates of moist sesquimation, favorable patient reported outcomes. We felt that most women were able to use it successfully. Um, and this is uh, kind of the background that we used uh, to help propose the Alliance trial. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Um, so we thought that post mastectomy radiotherapy patients uh, would be a key cohort for the clinical trial because they're at higher risk for radiation dermatitis and there's a greater impact on quality of life. Many of our patients are also reconstructed. We know that there are higher rates of expander and implant loss uh, as, as related to radiation therapy, some from infectious or non-infectious complications. Um, and we felt like uh, that there is potential for uh, reduction in risk of radiation dermatitis to maintain the skin integrity as a possible way to help mitigate that as well. Next slide. And we have looked at our um, post mastectomy radiation therapy patients and uh, reconstruction. This was reported at ASTRO last year amongst our patients who have been treated with both photons and protons who are reconstructed. Next slide. Um, in our experience in this cohort, about 60% of patients were using Mepitel film. You can see that there's a low rate of reconstructive failure, but a higher rate of um, reoperation and infection than would be ideal. Next slide. And next. And as you could see, what we thought was really interesting from our cohort is that patients who are using Mepitel film actually had lower rates of unplanned reoperation and lower rates of infection. So we think there is some promise for the Mepitel film uh, in this population to potentially impact long-term toxicity as well. Next slide. Next, yeah. Yes, so we uh, so the Mayo experience in terms of post mastectomy is again we think Mepitel film uh, may be valuable for these patients not only for acute toxicity but that may impact uh, their potential risk for reconstructive complication. Next slide. Um, uh, so uh, so it took us a few years to get Alliance uh, to work through the Alliance uh, system and the regula regulations to get the study open. Next slide. Um, this is an example of some of the work that was done to help support that Mepitel film did not have a bolus effect and did not impact dose at the skin surface. So these are overlaid graphs of the uh, dose distribution at the surface and at depth at 6 and 18 MV photons, seeing that there's no difference between uh, control and Mepitel film. Next slide. Um, so the Alliance uh, trial is currently ongoing. Um, this is a randomized clinical trial uh, in women who have had post, uh, who require post mastectomy radiotherapy who are undergoing conventional fractionation. Next slide. Um, so uh, this is uh, like Dr. Chow's study, a two to one randomization in favor of Mepitel film versus institutional standard of care. And we do allow for whatever the institution uses currently and that can include Mometazone, which is also evidence-based. Um, we're stratifying by the presence or absence of reconstruction, the use of bolus, boost, and, and BMI. Next slide. Um, so patients just have to have non-inflammatory breast cancer um, and uh, have no allergies um, and uh, or no silicone sensitivities. They have to be able to complete questionnaires and they need to be undergoing conventionally fractionated photon-based radiotherapy. Next slide. Our primary endpoint is uh, measuring the severity of radiation dermatitis as measured by the patient reported aspect of the um, RISRAS scale, which Dr. Chow introduced. We're also collecting um, uh, physician reported outcomes as well as uh, photographs. And we're following patients for reconstructive failure revision uh, within two years as well. Um, we are aiming for 25% uh, minority enrollment based on uh, some of the available evidence that supports that minority patients may have higher risk for dermatitis. This is just an example of, or this is the study calendar. So we're collecting assessments weekly during radiation. We're having patients come back for, fo back for photographs a week to two weeks after the completion of radiation. Then they'll be followed uh, every three months for the first couple of years. Next slide. 
Um, we have uh, we have a limited number of sites uh, that are able to accrue um, based on the uh, FDA uh, in terms of limitations placed on um, the Mepitel. So we're distributing from Mayo Clinic, have 25 sites. And we have found that uh, this was a very uh, popular study just in terms of patients are interested and physicians are interested. Um, as soon as we activated, uh, we saw a little bit of a lag just in the first couple of months. But since that time, we've seen uh, that we're actually accruing above expectation and we hope that we'll be complete uh, by the end of the year, beginning of 2024. Next slide. Um, so we are uh, we are working with the individual sites to implement Mapatel film, and I would say the most common questions are just about what's allowed concurrently, um, and also how to apply the film, especially in the tricky areas. Um, so we spend a lot of time communicating with sites about that, um, but fortunately, as the studies moved on, and I think people have gained experience, that's gotten a bit easier. Next slide. Um, so in our current practice, we have the, the trial uh, open. So I'm the national P, um, um, primary principal investigator. Um, so we do have the study open, but unlike many centers in the United States, we have uh, access to Mepitel film through the Mayo Clinic store. So we do talk about Mepitel film for patients, uh, regardless of whether they're um, enrolling on the study or not. Um, in our practice, um, about 80% of patients who are undergoing post mastectomy radiation, whether that's photon, proton based, or regardless of fractionation, end up choosing to use Mepitel film and paying out of pocket for it. Um, our nurses uh, place the film during the first week of treatment and they also monitor patching and changing. So all of our nurses who specialize in breast radiotherapy, which there's a group of them, are trained in application and patching. Um, we do photograph patients at the end of treatment and give them instructions for how to care for it when the treatment is done. Um, that workflow means uh, several, um, uh, several, um, it means a lot of patients who are getting it, uh, who are using the film, which is wonderful. Um, we don't routinely use Mepitel film in patients who've undergone breast conserving uh, therapy. Um, we use alternative methods for that, but we do use a lot of it in our post mastectomy patients. Um, so in future, I think we anticipate completion and results of the Alliance trial, which will really be complementary to Dr. Chow's data, just in terms of conventional fractionation and post mastectomy patients. I think uh, I acknowledge that uh, radiation dermatitis uh, may be lower in the future as practices change in terms of less bolus and uh, fewer boosts and um, potentially with hypofractionation. Um, however, you know, this is a, a side effect that really bothers patients. So, um, something, anything that we can do to reduce this, I think is really valuable. I think we want to continue to explore how Mount Patel film reduces uh, radiation dermatitis. And I'm thinking about how we integrate kind of some of the other newer data for radiation dermatitis prophylaxis. And uh, with that, I think I'll end and just acknowledge the entire breast team at uh, Mayo Clinic, including um, some of the early early folks who were very instrumental in helping us to acquire access to Mepitel film, and of course, the nursing colleagues who make it possible for our patients to get the film. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Corbin, for the very comprehensive sharing. So now uh, we will move on to the uh, first speaker. Uh, Ms. Rosemary Hill um, is uh, currently a nurse for over 35 years, and she is a specialist on the wound care in the Vancouver Coastal mm -hmm. Health from the Canada. And she will share with us on the nurse ad, uh, perspective uh, for the use of pepito film. So, um, uh, let's welcome uh, 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 Rosemary to share with us. I will uh, upload the, uh, I will share the PowerPoint first. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity um, this morning to just chat briefly. Um, and for the sake of time, I will go through these slides fairly quickly um to allow my colleague uh, Francoise to speak as well and allow time for uh question and answers so I'm going to quickly um originally I was going to share some of the work but I think most of the previous speakers have talked about the work of the randomized control studies so let's put the next slide forward and we'll look at some of the activities in Vancouver so this is again the scale that we use at our BC Cancer Agency and so my efforts were all focused on our patients um, only experiencing grade one, um, uh, sitting in the, the landscape of grade one versus anything further. Next slide. So it was uh, in the midst of COVID uh, that several patients were starting to come to me as a result of a plastic surgeon who was doing reconstructive surgery uh, for women with breast cancer. 
And she had uh, done research uh, and realized the benefits of the soft silicone film and uh, with the safe tech te technology. And she began to send her patients my way. And that's where I began in February of 2021 to meet women with breast cancer and begin the application of Mepitel film. They had done their research and they felt that there would be benefit. So initially, it was women between the ages of 29 to 69. They had reconstructive surgery. They had had their chemotherapy, some with metastatic disease. Next slide. <clears throat> Those early results were very encouraging. And um, I began to, uh, so you can see that as a result of those first cases that came in my door where I would uh, apply the film, um, what they would do generally is they would assume the posture that they would take um, for radiation and then I would apply the film accordingly. We will show a video of what that application process looks like. <laughs> I've been fortunate to chat on occasion with the nurses from the Mayo Clinic as well. And um, I we try to adopt a very similar technique when it comes to the application. One person in those early cases had an allergy to silicone, and so we, we pulled her out. Uh, but the results, as you'll see in the photos going forward, next slide, were very encouraging. So that three weeks later, after 15 treatments, there was minimal um, erythema and that, um, uh, so that so that we were seeing the benefits of the film. And that was on a 69 year old lady with 25 treatments. Go on. <clears throat> um, also with women of different skin tones and color, we sometimes noted um, differences um, in terms of a darker skin pigment. Next slide. Um, particularly that axillary region, with some women who like to continue to do aggressive workouts, the film would get um, would would uh, begin to peel, and so those those were my early learnings to coach my patients on not um, participating in aggressive workouts because it would lend the film to peeling off, and so early on I adopted in my teaching. To, to, if they could, to reduce some of that um, active treatment, but I would teach them how to do patch-ups. You can see in the axilla that the skin tones would go a little darker um, as the film would lift. But overall, she only would uh, continue on, would only um, reach the point of a grade one um, in terms of severity. Continue. <clears throat> And you'll see how there was very little uh, skin damage in those instances. I then, a year later, took the opportunity to take a new survey of about 20 of my patients and conduct um, a telephone survey with them and just ask them a simple set of questions. Next slide. And I said to them, please, on a scale of zero to three, Describe any skin breakdown you experienced while using the film. And generally speaking, 40% had no skin breakdown and 60% um, there was a faint redness and none moved into grade two. So these were very a very favorable uh, response. Next slide. And also you'll see the um, reported discomfort of wearing the film was not an issue. Uh, and generally 85%, there was none at all in terms of the patient discomfort as far as wearing the film, while 15% mentioned a little bit. Of course, they could continue to shower daily if they had the film. Next slide. I think... Um, we, I asked them about the impact of their day-to-day -day activities, their clothing at, while they were at work. Um, and 50% said the Mepitel film, uh, there was not at all an impact and 50% said a little. Next slide. A final question was, how willing would you be to recommend the film? And all 20 participants said there was 100% willingness and they would continue to share to any of their friends and share on social media the benefits they had experienced wearing the soft silicone film. Next slide. 
So those were some of the quotes. In one particular case, it was exciting because she was able to proceed onwards with her reconstructive surgery uh, in an earlier time setting as a result of her skin having minimal impact from the radiation. Those were just some of the quotes. Next slide. I want to quickly talk about those some case studies where they did have to have bolus or boost treatments and they had heard about the film. And I continue to apply the film on people who have a boost or bolus dose. And so far in all cases, I only have them reach grade one severity, which I think is very, very powerful that they'd never moved to grade two despite receiving boost or bolus doses. So next slide. This was a lady who was 76 years old. Those were the details. Um, she had to have bolus dosing. Next slide. And we began the film application. And you'll notice that after her 16 treatments and following bolus, she only had the erythema. Prior to her commencement of her treatment, the ra uh, radiation oncologist had said more than likely she would experience severe radiation dermatitis. So she was very, very thrilled with her response. And of course, her quality of life and the lack of suffering was, was a very um, critical. Next slide. I, uh, Dr. Chow's work in Ontario had spread to many other women who were going to have radiation therapy, including those who were going to have bolus. And a woman reached out to me from Ontario and said, could I find a colleague of mine that would similarly apply the film for her, which I did. And I reached out to her in uh, Peterborough, Ontario. And she too, despite bolus, next slide, um, 44 years old, had the bolus and, next slide, results. Um, there was my colleague who just upon a phone call, I shared with her there was the story of Mepitel film, Dr. Chow's work from Sunnybrook, and Erin, the patient, began her uh, treatment for bolus using the film. Next slide. And the only place where there were some difficulty with application was axilla. And she shows that that was once again the area that the film didn't quite cover. And that's where she experienced the radiation um, dermatitis. <clears throat> Next slide. And those were her results, 44 years old, following bolus treatment. Next slide. Um, again, I just want to emphasize the precautions. So when patients come to me and request the Mepitel film application, I ask them if they have a silicone allergy. I talk to them about um, some of the precautions with excessive or intense work workouts. Next slide. And I think in this aspect, um, communication is so key so that they can text or email me as they experience any issues with the film in terms of it peeling, how to patch, and being careful not to have more than a centimeter of overlap. Next slide. And again, um, I, I want to really uh, commend that early work of Dr. Patrice Hurst, and since then has also talked about the psychological stress that can affect the severity of radiation-induced um, skin reactions. And I believe that somehow, um, as a result of the film, of course, but there's a sense within the women um, that this, their film and that they are um, uh, taking advantage of latest evidence-based practice. And it reduces to some degree the anxiety as they go through that course of radiotherapy. Next slide. And um, uh, again, I feel I uh, just would like to make a comment that these women um, also passed along to me, uh, their, uh, they inspired me uh, in terms of their homework as far as what they did to make a difference in going through this next part of the journey of breast cancer. I think we should probably now just move quickly to the video for the application and then we can answer questions accordingly.
I would like to add one thing. I just had a recent client who had 26 treatments, bolus, 38 years old, and I've documented with photos. Again, she only had grade one. And I just, I'm so, um, I really feel it's very important to share these women where they're potentially going to experience some discomfort um, and they are vulnerable to skin breakdown, but as a result of the film have only at, at most reached a grade one um, level of severity. Thank you. Dr. Okay, show I'm trying to patient, show the patient yes. version. The patient okay. version. Patient version, the uh, version. Yeah, the patient pa version of the end. Uh, so there are two versions. One is yes, the patient I version. I prepare the, the healthcare professional one. So the patient version is better. Okay, I try to do that. Give me a second then. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let me to film. So while you're doing, like I just want to, like uh, we've done the study, but the biggest resource is this needs to be applied by somebody. So at our center, because it needs to be applied by the health uh, radiation therapist or the nurse or the uh, research assistant. It is very time consuming. So like uh, the pickup is not very good. So then we talked to Rosemary and the company. They have produced the video. And now pretty much the post we show it to the patient and the husband. And the husband is doing such a good job. We have about 10 patients right now. They've done such a fantastic job. And they also put the film in the supercapital and axillary area with very good results. Now with these husband applying the film, we have no grade two free toxicity in breast, chest wall, and also in the supercapital and axillary area. So Rosemary's video is worthwhile to show it to the patient and the family members. And it has been proven that the family members can do a very good job. And I've been talking about, they do even a better job when compared with the nurses and the radiation therapists and my research assistant as well. Okay, the video is ready. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Any sound? We can't hear the sound. Can you hear sound now? No. 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 Uh try to share again. I try to share again. Just I try to share again. Let's have a look. Any sound this time? Not yet. I don't know what is the problem right now. Just a moment. Uh. Share it with the sound. This percent share it with the sound. Yes, the YouTube sound can't be shared. This is muted. How about right now? Is, can you hear right now? No. 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 <coughs> Don't know what is the problem with the setting. I maybe I try to. But you to know, hmm? 
Yes. Actually, it's not so bad. I mean, if if you can't get the sound, at least there's enough um, of the visual cues to get a sense of the application. So I don't want to I don't want to miss hearing from Francoise. Um, so so maybe it's okay. We just continue yeah. to play the video. Yeah, from yeah. uh, we cannot locate Francois. I wonder, Ray, whether you can play for your uh, cell phone and then have the voice there while okay. playing the video. Mm -hmm. So it, Maybe might be, I just, it might be working. I pass the host to Ray to see if he can share one. And also use the uh, cell phone. Okay, let's see. The, okay. Cell phone, when you make, you can use the one that you mean to, I can share? You want me to share? You, you okay. try to share first, okay? Oh, okay. Got the wrong one. Or I can try to. <laughs> Sorry, I missed the one. But, oh, here. Sure. Patient version, yeah. And just for the audience, uh, the methadone patients, they actually form a Facebook group, group Facebook group as well. Skin and wound care. Today, I'm going to walk you through it's the okay. steps of methadone. That's field. very good. Addressing we can hear, but we cannot see the screen. While you're going to stop share. And then share again. Oh, okay. Before I show you how to apply the dressing, I want to provide some important information for proper use. First, if you have an allergy to silicone, let your radiation oncologist know so that they can provide. Uh, let's see, I'll share the screen. I'll share the screen, let's see. Oh, Amy can try to share. Let me see. If I can help, you can make me the host. Uh, I need to find, okay, okay, just a moment. Uh, okay. Make you I think um, uh, while you're working on the technical part, I just want to um, echo what Dr. Chow said, that I find that I meet patients um, through email, they call me, or I send them the video, um, and this gives them the background as to understanding the film. And then the husband, um, I they can apply it. Go ahead. And here today, I'm going to walk you through the steps of methadone film application. Hello, my name is Rosemary Hill. I'm a nurse who specializes in radiation treatment and wound care. Cancer. Cancer. Today, I'm going to walk you through Before the steps. Before I show you how to apply the dressing, I want to provide some important information for properly going through radiation treatments. If you have an allergy to silicone, you mute y'all. Show you how to so that they can provide alternative protection. It is best to apply the film the day before you start your radiation treatments. The skin where the dressing will be applied should be clean and dry. Um, Do I not think apply there is still some sound on the area. other end. And be careful not sure. to stretch is the that... Epitel film. I, I think I can hear the other video track. Yeah, yeah. Sure you have all the required you mute the other end before you start applying the dressing. Your supplies. So should... You need to oh, stop way. sharing first. Wait, wait. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you mute yourself? Yes. You, you can stop first because I already oh. passed the host to Amy. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. I'll share again. Okay, we can start from here. To okay. apply the dressing, I want to provide some important information for proper use. First, if you have an allergy to silicone, let your radiation oncologist know so that they can provide alternative protection. It is best to apply the film the day before you start your radiation treatments. The skin where the dressing will be applied should be clean and dry. Do not apply lotion or deodorant to the area. 
and just be careful not to stretch the Mepitel film when applying it. Make sure you have all the required supplies ready before you start applying the dressing. Your supplies should include four sheets of 10 by 25 centimeters, two sheets of 15 by 20 centimeters, a pair of scissors, and a marking pen. Let's take a minute to make sure you are in the best position for the application of the film. The film should always be applied in the position you take for your daily radiation treatments, lying down with your arm above your head. It's very important to note the application of Mepitel film should always occur in this radiation position and when repair or patching of the dressing is required. Begin with the longer sheet first. Remove the backing on the sheet, place the sheet at the armpit and let it land without stretching all the way down the side of the chest. Smooth the film into place and remove the surrounding paper frame. Now, take the 10 by 25 centimeter sheet and cut it in half lengthwise. Keeping the film narrow helps to land the film nicely over the breast area without wrinkling. Begin application of the strip just where the breast begins, landing the film completely underneath the breast, lifting your breast as necessary and continuing onto the abdomen. Make sure when you start that you only overlap just under one centimeter from where your previous piece of film landed. Repeat the same process with your second strip. Feel free to use the 15 by 20 centimeter sheet if you have a smaller body type, just as long as the breast area is covered, including the breast crease and onto your upper abdomen. Your next piece of film will go over your sternum or breastbone. Measure how much you need to apply, ensuring that you go about two and a half centimeters beyond the tattoo area. Cut the width of Mepitel film to land the film from your collarbone down to your upper abdomen. Finish the application with the film from your collarbone to the beginning of the breast area. If you've had a complete mastectomy, just land the 10 by 25 centimeter sheet from the collarbone to just below where your breast previously was, ending on your upper abdomen. Now I'm going to take a minute to view all the areas where I placed the film and gently press where any small air bubbles might have occurred. Mepitel film is left in place for the duration of your radiation treatments. Just as before, take your film and apply over the shoulder blade area on your back. Once your film is on, I want to remind you that it is safe to shower with, but often I suggest applying a hand towel over that area when you shower as it keeps the film from curling up and lifting. Excessive sweating can lift your film up as well, so consider reducing your exercise load while you are having treatments. Sometimes small amounts of film lift, so just trim and then reapply a patch of Mepitel film, just keeping that overlap below one centimeter. It's important to remember for patch applications, always assume the same position as you did for the initial Mepitel film application. Once you've had your final treatment, gently remove any remaining film this is best done in the shower, cleansing your skin with a gentle, fragrance-free, pH-balanced soap. Dry well and then reapply the film as before, leaving it on for about two weeks. This will continue to protect the skin that has recently received radiation. Once you no longer need the dressing, moisturize your skin daily or even twice a day. It's best to do this after a shower or bath. Remember, if you're experiencing any skin irritations, such as a rash, reach out to your healthcare team providers. Also, check out the link below for more information about Mapitel film. So, uh, thanks, Amy, to help to share the uh, video. So, I think Rosemary already completed the presentation. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Dr. Wang. Yes.
Thank, thanks for your uh, sharing. It's very detailed and the video is very nice. So uh, now we will move forward to the final part of the sharing. We will have uh, Mr. Francis Gallen. Um, he is a radiation therapist from Sunnybrook Health uh, Science Center, ODAD Cancer Center, Canada. So because I don't have um, the his PowerPoint on hand, so maybe I just um, pass the host to uh, Francis, so that he can uh, present to us. Uh, Francis, are you there? Not okay him this morning as well. So if he's not there, Cindy, you can open up for the question and answers now. Okay, okay. So it seems, um, yes, Francis is not there. So maybe, yes, because of the uh, running out of time <laughs> issue also. So we can move forward to the uh, Q&A part. Um, Let's see the chat box. Uh, oh, just a moment. I can't find my chat box. Certainly. Chat box, yes, here. I can see uh, someone is already uh, asked question um, and being answered. Maybe just, um, I just try to read it out first. Question about Mepitofim. Is it also be used as treatment of radiation dermatitis mm -hmm. or only for prevention? Um, yeah, I'll answer that from my perspective and I welcome others to jump in, but I use it for prevention. It is not necessarily, there are other products that I would use uh, for treatment. Um, but Dr. Chow, we could also, I don't know if you want to explain how if somebody does experience some skin irritation that they remove a portion of the film from that area and then you would apply a treatment accordingly but not necessarily remove the whole film in itself but i do not necessarily use the film for treatment yeah dr Cobin taught me about this so kim perhaps you can answer this question yeah, I mean, I would just echo what Rosemary's experience has been. So if somebody develops an area of moist desquamation, um, which actually doesn't usually happen with the film, but if it does, I think it tends to be in a friction related area like the axilla. We do trim back from that area and then address that area of moist desquamation focally while retaining the film um, in place elsewhere because it, it does have a prophylactic effect in, in my opinion. Any further assessment? So um, uh, there is another question. Can you apply the film over open desquamation areas? Um, I have used mapless light on open desquamation areas between treatments. So I think, yes. Yes, yes. I think we've, we've answered that, but I will add that um, again, I would reiterate not for treatment purposes, but that's a good choice the person used. They used an absorptive dressing because when you're with moist desquamation, you can use products such as Mepilex Light or even Mepilex Transfer that transfers the exudate out. So those are reasonable options for treatment. But today, our message is all around um, prevention and the, the benefits of the soft silicone film for prevention, which generally, as a result of using the film, you generally do not experience the moist desquamation. Any further comment? No, uh, then we got another question. Just want to ask whether it is a must to apply the film to the back or it will be good enough uh, for the chest wall to, to put it on the chest wall and the axilla. I, I think the answer to that question really depends on the radiotherapy plan. Um, so in treating a supraclavicular field, there's often a contr contributing dose um, from a posterior supraclavicular field. And I guess it depends on how much that dose is and the dose expected at the posterior back of the uh, shoulder area. When I use um, protons, for example, there's no posterior beam. I don't put anything on the back. Um, if uh, if you are um, seeing that the dose at the posterior aspect reaches, you know something significant, and you have enough contributing from uh, from the uh, superclav uh, with a posterior beam, then I think um, that is an area where we would expect there to be some benefit for dermatitis prophylaxis. And I know many of us before the era of Mepitel, um, you know, 
many of us treating radiation oncologists probably forgot to warn a patient that they would get an itchy spot or skin reaction on the back area. So I think um, it's very reasonable to use in that area, but it really does depend on the radiation dose plan uh, and uh, what your experience is. I don't know if you have anything to add, Rosemary. Um, I would say that I do use it um, of, particularly for women who are going to have boost or bolus dosing because they they do. It's interesting to see uh, sometimes it's a very rosé, a light erythema that occurs, but in bed at night, they feel some benefit from having the film there uh, versus having nothing at all. So I'm feeling more inclined to put it on the back. Uh, sometimes women just ask me because their radiation oncologist has explained there could be that experience where they based on their radiation. And so I say, absolutely no problem. And I will put it on the back. But generally, I think Dr. Chow's trials, um, when you look at what was done at Sunnybrook, I do not, they did not use the film on the, um, on their, on the posterior aspect. Correct, Dr. Chow? So it's correct. If it's local treatment, we don't do it at the back. But if, when it's come to the like a local regional four field, now the husband is actually putting all those in the uh, axillary neck and the uh, posterior supercapitular area. And those areas now with the husband doing all those, we don't see any desperation at all now. Okay. Yeah, I think um, from a practical perspective, that was one of the most exciting aspects of this webinar is to hear that the initial experience with um, caregivers applying the film has been really um, positive. Because I think that we all recognize as people who are experienced in using the film, that it probably uh, would be a barrier for many centers to have enough staff trained to apply it. So I think uh, that's really wonderful work. And I'd like to congratulate Rosemary and Edward on kind of getting that, getting that up and going. I'm excited to explore that too. Okay. I um, sorry, sorry. My, my my thanks actually always extends both to you, uh, Dr. Corbin and Dr. Chow. And I've so appreciated speaking to your nurses. They have given extra little nuances to the application that I've really appreciated. So thank you. Like okay. just uh, on the most recent case, uh, we've got a patient. Her husband is an ENT surgeon. Like, of course, you see, we think that ENT surgeon, this is like a simple job, right? And he actually finds it a lot to learn from the video, and he does a very good job. So, like, I think that with, uh, like, uh, Tim's comment, we should do a survey from the patient husband perspective to write a report of the uh, healthcare, uh, the uh, provider at home doing a good job. Okay, so uh, we've got a question from uh, Michael. Um, is it possible to produce the mapito film that is be cut for different sizes of breasts, uh, such as 40D or another one for 36C, so that the film can uh, um, can be used on the breast or curved areas instead of spending time in cutting and patching? Uh, I guess I would say the nature of a curved area, even if you had a large sheet, it would um, pleat and not land appropriately. So I would still steer towards that 10 by 25 that in a sense allows for um, easier application where you don't get sort of crinkles and folds versus one large sheet. Um, any of the other comments, uh, Dr. Corbin or Dr. Chow? Yeah, so like uh, from our research experience, we had a patient with big breast. And what happened is, like as you can imagine, right, when the patient lies on the treatment position, the breast tends to fall on the gravity to the mid axillary line. My research students is very good. So when they apply to the film, they actually in the way from the front, from the lateral to medial and push the breast towards the medial side as well. So in some way, it will reduce the lung dose on the left side, it will reduce the heart dose, but it changed the contour totally. So when we do the comb beam, there is a big problem. So after that, so there is one big, no one fixed model. Basically, you have to apply in cheese that did, did, did not distort the breast contour that was on the planning position. So that's the key point. So the answer is still, we have to do it very gently to not distort the breast contour during the, uh, the, the fixation of the film. 
Okay, there is another question from Michael is what happened when in weird hot weather when there are a lot of the sweating? So like uh, how do we like are uh, going to potentially solve this problem? Rosemary and Kim? I would love I to have the it... answer to that question too. <laughs> I think it is really challenging when patients sweat a lot. Um, and like Rosemary suggested, we also advise patients that if they are engaged in vigorous workouts, they may have less adherence of the film and we don't know if the benefit of the film remains in place if it's being replaced, you know, on a daily basis or every couple of days. So we provide similar counseling like Rosemary suggested, and maybe I'll just pause and see if she has any other thoughts. Um, I The only other thought I have is with some people who do sweat a lot, they have an inclination when they do start to see it peeling that they will think, oh, I'll just peel it all off and then reapply. And so I always caution, if you notice that it's peeling back because you've been sweating, just trim and reapply. Don't feel the need to remove it all because then they're pulling the film on that recently, uh, the tissue that's had radiation and it would contribute to some epidermal stripping. But it's funny how people have that mindset of, oh, if it's peeling back because I'm sweating and I'm sweating and they want to feel clean that they may feel inclined to pull it all off wash and reapply so it's an important teaching point um just to really emphasize the patch aspect yeah so cindy in hong kong will be trying on some method health patients in hong kong where the weather is pretty humid so cindy will be able to share the experience with us down the road and the question to michael is we have to do the ct simulation first before we apply for the we apply CT simulation takes place first, and then the film is applied just before the first start of the radiation treatment. And in Toronto, there is always a two week from the CT simulation to the medical film. So the answer is no, CT simulation by itself, and then on the first day, do the medical film before the radiation. Cindy, you're muted. I think in the interest of time, uh, Cindy might want to uh, wrap it off now. And people uh, can yes. send One more email last... questions to us. Okay, okay. So because of the interest of time, so maybe we will uh, conclude uh, the meetings today. I think uh, everyone should um, have uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, learning from all of our experts and, and so happy to have all of us, uh, all of you with us tonight. And I uh, so we will conclude today's meeting. And for anyone, if there is any further questions, please feel free to send the uh, questions to us and then we can uh, try to help to ask the questions and send better answer to all of you. Cindy and Ray, can you send the uh, video link and the uh, Facebook chat to all the participants? And feel free to uh, give out our email address to all the attendees so that if they want to ask us the questions by email, we'll be happy to answer. Okay. Thank you so much. So Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a thank nice you. Evening. Thanks. Thank you, all the speakers and the moderators. Thank you. Thank you.